everyone, welcome back to my channel and you're watching The Brown Feminine. In today's episode, I will be telling you about how you can transition from a career in biomedical lab-based research to more clinical research. That is a journey that I have personally taken, so I have lots of exciting tips and opinions and ideas and suggestions to give all of you. So without further ado, let's get into it. The primary difference between working in the lab and working in clinical research is, of course, the kind of flexibility you have, the kind of work hours, the exact kind of nature of your job, and the type of research that you are performing. So while you're in the lab, you are performing what we call basic science which means directly at the cellular, molecular, chemical level, you're actually changing like and studying the fundamentals of processes and mechanisms and making observations. So a lot of it requires you to be on the bench. And by on the bench, we mean you will be inside a lab with your lab coat on and you're gonna be getting at it maybe in a biosafety one, two, three, or four kind of level. And you're gonna be working primarily with say tissue cultures and other kind of in vitro experimentations. Some labs work with in vivo. What this means is in vitro is where you're working primarily on chemicals or cells and things and fluids. While um, in the in vivo, you're actually working with live things like animal models, mice, hamsters, chimpanzees, you you name it they got it <laughs> but in terms of clinical research your entire human population is different your sample population is different so you are working primarily with human subjects live human beings now they might be more invasive so things that are developed in the lab might be being tested on them like a pharmaceutical drug therapy but there's also a lot of different kinds of uh, clinical research which don't even involve giving a person a pill it's not all clinical trials you can just ask a person questions and they can self-report various things to you through a survey or an interview that is also considered clinical research you can look at patient information on charts and that would still be considered clinical research because your sample population is primarily human and when it's human it usually is not at odd hours of the day or night because the data is usually available to you in a more like flexible setting. You usually have a nine to five job in clinical research while working in the lab that I've personally done throughout my grad school and I know my friends are doing throughout their PhDs, postdoctoral fellowships and stuff and RA ships. It's a lot of crazy hours and your life is pretty much ruled by the experiments that you're running and the needs of the experiment, which might mean more weekends, which might mean late night hours and crazy um, timings throughout the week. Um, not being able to necessarily just call in a day off if you have an experiment running that week, which needs you to be there every day. In clinical research though, even if you are working with human subjects, it's usually based on a calendar, there are appointments made, people usually will not ask a patient to come in at the middle of the night. So there is a lot more flexibility, the jobs are very different, it's a lot more guesswork and paperwork than I see in the world of basic science. Now we know the differences, now let's talk about how you can transition from one to the other. So the first thing before we transition, and I've said this in my prior videos too, is that you need to first know what you're able to offer. So let's take a look at your toolbox if you're from the world of basic science. So whether or not you've studied pharmacology, biology, chemistry, anything to do with the lab, um, you need to find out what you're good at. And one thing that you definitely, definitely know how to do is understand research design, protocol development, um, research methodology, maybe analysis of your data, identifying and generating data, analyzing and presenting it in graphical formats, um, running statistical tests to find out if they're significant or not. So you have that whole array of research understanding and experience. You have the theoretical basis of it and you have some practical basis of it to your undergrad or grad school. So that's definitely one tick in your corner that you can transition over to clinical research. Because an understanding of research methodology is not limited to only clinical research, right? The broader things like, okay, what is randomization? What is having a control group? All of these things are highly transferable skills. Now, not the second thing that you have is that you've worked probably with some kind of 
human related cells or tissues or sometimes things that people are donating. So think back and find out if in your laboratory work, you might have at least had access to patient information. Like for example, during my grad school, I was getting a lot of blood and tissue samples from human beings, even though I never directly recruited them or interacted with them, they were done by other nurses, but I did have access to patient identifiers, right? So patient IDs and like hospital codes and patient contact information, for example, or gender or ethnicity or other information. So I did have to receive the training of how to handle sensitive patient data or sensitive patient health information carefully, how to protect privacy and confidentiality and ensure anonymity, right? So all of that understanding to do with patient ethics, you have a big chunk of that already, even if you've just worked with tissues, right? You've made sure that you have protect the information of whoever's giving it to you, wherever it's coming from, and so on and so forth. So if you're able to do that, it is excellent. Now let's look at what else you can bring to the table. Now you definitely have also done a lot of theory. So whether you've done, I don't know, psychotherapy or you've worked in the wet lab environment and you've done biology, pharm pharmacology, genetics, cellular molecular technology, immunology, whatever you did, um, you've definitely been exposed to a lot of theory, especially at the undergraduate level. And that actually forms a strong basis. For example, if you've had courses on human anatomy and physiology, that will definitely help you and transfer over to your understanding of just people and processes and whatever disease is being studied in whatever clinical trial that you're applying to, right? Understanding, oh, I understand this disease is being studied, maybe myocardial infarctions or arrhythmia, because I know the basic physiology and anatomy of the heart. So me transitioning my knowledge over is going to be easier. And a lot of this is followed up. If you've done enough graduate school as well in your wet lab environment, you know how to read papers, you know how to understand abstracts, how to skim through, how to synthesize information. You also understand the concept of preparing manuscripts and grants. So these are also very precious things that you get to transition over here. You understand that there is a lot of experience needed to write grants and apply for them and forming budgets and requesting money to do valuable research, how to make something uh, seem uh, pre be presentable as very important and urgent in order to ensure that there is funding to do that important work. All of that you have an idea about and all of that you can transfer over to the world of clinical research. Now let's see the things that you don't really have in clinical research, right? So you don't have a lot of um, personal experience in working and dealing with patients one-on-one. -on -one. You haven't really had to provide like patient education or perform assessments and you kind of didn't have the clinical rights because you're not a clinician. You're coming from a wet lab environment or a basic science world. Well, that is fine. The fact that you don't have a lot of expertise working with humans is something that you can still make up. For example, if you've been volunteering at a clinic, you probably have extra training of how to like be there for patients while still knowing your legal and clinical like boundaries and how to kind of make sure that you're not ever taking photos and uploading them to Instagram or Facebook. You know that you can't hear something here and go and sh share it outside of the world with your friends. So all of this understanding of your confidentiality and privacy and stuff is something you can also gain by volunteering in a clinical setting, in blood drives, in outpatient community clinics, in hospitals. There is so much volunteer opportunity. Furthermore, if you have any background in, for example, working with special needs children, even if it meant you did it like as a babysitter or in other conditions, or you worked uh, maybe as a support staff in a long-term care home, a nursing home, or anything like that, then a lot of those skills and trainings you got there will also transition over here, and you can use them to demonstrate that you have the basic idea of how you would be dealing with difficult patients or high-risk populations, and so on. Now, if you do have a background in the wet lab world in basic science, but you do not have a lot of these skills that I'm talking about, there are ways that you can get them. I do talk a lot about clinical research certification programs, which have co-op opportunities. Um, furthermore, if you don't want to go down road, you don't want to spend money and do like an online course and then maybe not have being worth it, maybe you don't get a job out of it. That's still okay. You can still start by asking to volunteer in some university professor's lab, some job that needs a part-time RA, a casual RA for a few hours. And the minute you start doing even maybe one shift there, maybe a weekend, maybe some assisting on the side with a doctor, a physician, a nurse practitioner, a clinical epidemiologist, 
just email them away, find your nearest hospital research institute or academy institute, find some clinicians who do clinical research there or in a small CRO, like a clinical contract research organization and email them and ask if you can volunteer or ask if you have any part-time RA hours. Now, by doing this, you can actually learn the other skills that you need by doing. So learn by doing is another excellent way. It might be a little bit challenging to sell yourself there, but as long as you're going in at an entry level, a lot of these smaller organizations could really use the help and they might have budgetary constraints in being able to hire like an associate or a coordinator. So they might get a few of these students who are maybe doing a PhD in something basic science, but they also want to keep developing their clinical research environment and skills. So they they might recruit you even if you're working in some other fields you you say okay i'm planning to transition to this field in the long run and i was hoping to gain some experience by working with you even as a volunteer or a part-time research assistant is there something available i have personally done that a lot i had to transition throughout there so if you're trying to go about doing this transition without doing any major degrees or certifications this is an excellent way to do but finally, if you feel like, no, the barriers are just too high, your field maybe is like physics and it's super, super different and you're just not being able to transition from one job to another, then it is okay to go back to school and get a clinical de degree, which can help you with that. Um, you can look at clinical master's degrees. You can look at like a nursing degree, which I personally did because not only did my second bachelor's in nursing help me um, work in clinical research, but it also opened the door of doing a whole bunch of things clinically as an RN as well. But that's a topic for another video. So if you'd like to learn more about the degrees and diplomas that you want to do, comment down below and I will share another video with you about exactly that. So that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed the content. In summary, yes, there are lots of different ways that you can carry what you've learned in basic sciences and transition on into a world of clinical research. Look into your toolbox, see what you already have, and then present it beautifully on your resume and in your interview. Focus on the strengths and don't mention the weaknesses and try to actually find ways of demonstrating that you still actually have covered up some of the weaknesses through alternate skill strategies like volunteering and part-time research assistantship and other like work experiences, other trainings and certifications. So apart from that, you're also open to go back and do an online clinical research certification or do a full master's degree in clinical research or go back and get a full on clinical degree in whatever that might be. One example was nursing. So these are the ways that you can actually transition from uh, actually being in basic sciences in the lab to a world of clinical research. And that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Bye.